What's up guys, Shane Starnes here. Your Note 10 has finally arrived. You're just taking it out of the box and going through your initial setup. These are the top 10 things that you need to do to get the best possible experience out of your Galaxy Note 10. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the very first thing that I would do pulling my phone directly out of the box is I would go ahead and take some measures to protect this device. So first of all, the back of the phone is an absolute fingerprint magnet. As you can see, I've only had this phone out of the box for maybe a minute or two, not long, and it's already just picking up all kinds of nasty fingerprints. I really do love this Aurora Glow. I love the color shifts and everything. It's one of the neatest finishes that I've ever seen on a phone, but these fingerprints are just disgusting. So the first thing that you could do to take care of that and also just to protect your phone in general is I would suggest an Urban Armor Gear case. Now, they don't sponsor me in any way. They refuse to sponsor this channel, but I have used Urban Armor Gear cases for the past seven years on my Samsung and iPhones, every device that I've ever used. You guys know that I use normally Urban Armor Gear cases. They've actually got a few of these on the way for my Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. The Urban Armor Gear cases have military standard drop protection, and out of the probably 50 to 100 devices that I've used with an Urban Armor Gear case, only one phone has ever actually had a cracked screen, and that phone was dropped from about 30 feet from the top of a bleacher onto a concrete uh, that was underneath the bleacher. I would also recommend the Whitestone Dome glass screen protector. This is going to be the only glass screen protector that's going to work with the in-display fingerprint scanner on the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. This uses an adhesive to apply the screen protector with zero air bubbles, and that's the only way that the glass screen protector is going to work with the ultrasonic fingerprint uh, underneath the display of the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. The next thing that I would do is go ahead and make all of your home screen adjustments. So to set up the home screen on the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, you're just gonna kind of pinch, and then you have all kinds of settings down here. You can go ahead and change your wallpaper. All right, so once you've found one that you like, go ahead and select it. It gives you the option to download it. We'll go ahead and apply. You can do from home screen, lock screen, or home and lock screen. And we'll go ahead and set the wallpaper. Go back home, and now we have our new wallpaper. Next up, we'll go into our home screen settings here. There's several options. Uh, your home screen grid, you can actually fit more applications on your home screen than what it comes with out of the box. And you can fit more apps from your app drawer uh, into one page, which is also a useful feature. There are a few layouts here, so you can have the home screen and app screen, or you can do a home screen only, which is more like iOS, where you just kind of get uh, all your apps on your home screen without them being tucked away into an apps drawer. I prefer the home and apps. That way, when we swipe up, we get our app drawer. You've got options here to add apps to the home screen automatically. That's turned off by default. Uh, whenever you go into the Play Store and download a new application, if you have this turned on, it will automatically give you an icon on the home screen. I find that that makes things a little messy, so I'm glad that that's turned off by default. Swipe down for the notification panel. This is a pretty large display and it can be hard to reach all the way up to the notification panel with your thumb. If you turn this option on, you can swipe anywhere on the screen to bring down your notification panel. So there's also an option here to hide applications. I don't know, maybe you don't want everyone to be able to just go into your gallery mode and look at all your pictures. Maybe you have some private things in there that you don't want just anyone to be able to see by simply picking up your phone and going there. You can select to have that app hidden. That way they won't be able to see it on your home screen. They'd have to do some actual digging to get to that application. Once again, if we pinch to zoom here, you've got several different screens here. You can add more screens to your home screen. You can set which screen is your actual home screen. So if I hit the home button, it'll take me to this screen now. If I wanna go back to the standard home screen, just hit the home button there. You can also just delete screens. So I don't actually need this screen necessarily. I can hit the delete button. That'll delete that page. Now when I swipe over that way, I don't get a page. If I swipe over, I get the Bixby page. We can turn the Bixby homepage off by simply clicking on the button there. And then if we wanted to add home pages, uh, we could go ahead and add those home pages. Now when we swipe over, 
we have extra pages for apps that we want to get to quickly. To add applications to your home screen, there's a few ways that you can do this. Either you can press and hold and add to home, or you can kind of grab it and move it up top or down bottom. That's going to place your app on the home screen. And then you can also long press here and select items to make a folder. So we can add as many applications here as we want in our folder. And then simply click create a folder. All right, so now we can easily add that folder to our home screen. All right, so while we're setting up the home screen, we might as well set up our notification panel. Uh, you'll notice that if you swipe down once, you get some quick toggles here. I've got my Wi-Fi, I've got my ringtone, Bluetooth, airplane mode and flashlight. You can actually rearrange these. Just swipe down once again, click on the little menu button here and select button order. Now, if there's something that you need to use, say more than auto rotate, say that you would use the QR scanner more, you just simply go and put that up there next to the auto rotate or you can move your auto rotate down. The main thing here is you wanna make sure your first six items here are the ones that you use the most. All right, so once you have those reset, now those will be the ones that show up. So another thing you'll notice here, whenever you swipe down twice, you have your brightness slider. If you click down on this little arrow here, you can click show control on top. This way, whenever you swipe down once, you'll have your auto brightness without having to swipe down a second time. You can just simply adjust your brightness there. One thing that's different about the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus, you no longer have a power button. So there is an option here to power off your device or restart your device from the notification panel. Of course, you can use the Bixby button to power off your phone as well. But it's worth mentioning that it's also there in your notification panel. There's also a really easy way to get into your settings here uh, just from swiping down your notification panel so that you don't have to go into your app drawer to grab the settings. Once you've got your home screen set up the way that you like it, I would go ahead and set up some biometrics or some security settings here. So we'll go into our settings, we'll go into our biometrics and security. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on our fingerprint. All right, so you've got to choose between a pattern pin or password. Normally go with the pin. So to set up this in-display fingerprint scanner, we're gonna go ahead and scan our fingerprint. As you can see, it adds it pretty quickly. Um, I would just kind of hold the phone like you normally hold it when I'm setting up the fingerprint scanner. So just to test that out, we will put the phone to sleep. And as you can see, it is pretty quick. And it is pretty accurate. And I do like the fact that you can just press that fingerprint scanner without actually having to wake up the device on my OnePlus 7 Pro. You got to wake up the device before you can unlock it. So I do like the fact that you don't have to wake up the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus to unlock the device. You just got to make sure that you do put your finger in the right spot. Other than the fingerprint option, you do have a face recognition option here. This does not have the iris scanner. We only have one camera there. So that's no longer an option, but you do have face recognition. So you can go ahead and set that up. And then there's also another option in here that I like. Uh, there is a secure folder. So we had the option to hide our applications. Here you can hide any kind of files or apps. And to get to those apps or files, someone would actually need your fingerprint or your pin. All right, there's also this option for Samsung Pass. This is going to allow you to get into your favorite apps and services using your fingerprint scanner. So you may want to go ahead and enable that as well. The next thing you want to go ahead and set up is your always on display. That's one of the things that I really love about Samsung phones is they do include an always on display. This is going to allow easy access to your time, date, and notifications without having to actually dive into your phone. The OnePlus 7 Pro that I've been using, it doesn't have an always on display. It has this adaptive display that you, know, you have to tap to get to. This has an actual always on display. To set that up, we're going to go into our lock screen. We'll go into our always on display. Make sure that you do go ahead and turn that on. There's a few options here. You can tap to show or you can show always. 
This is only gonna use about an extra two or 3% of your battery, so it's not really a huge battery drain. It's definitely worth turning it on. Uh, you can set times for when it shows, so if you only want it to show during the day and you don't need that extra bright display kind of shining in your room at night while you're trying to sleep, you can have this set to turn off at night. Um, I kind of like to just keep it on, that way it's kind of like an alarm clock. I can always see what time it is if I roll over in the bed. If we go back, and then we go to our clock style, we can actually change the layout of our always on display. So there's all kinds of different clock styles here to choose from. Uh, you can even change the color of your always on display, which is really nice. If we go all the way to the right, uh, you've even got some little animations here that you can change. And then you can grab an always on display from the theme store. So there's just endless options for customization with your always on display. Here is the always on display. So it's not super bright, but it gives you all that important information quickly without having to dive into your phone. While we are in the lock screen setup, there is this really nifty feature called smart lock. This allows your phone to stay unlocked when it's in a trusted location or near a trusted device. So if you're wearing your smartwatch, this can sense that you're wearing the smartwatch and keep the phone unlocked. That way you're not having to go through the extra step of scanning your fingerprint or putting in your pin. If it senses that you're on like your home network when you get home, then it will stay unlocked. So if you've got people that are not really trustworthy around, maybe you don't wanna set this up, but it's definitely something to look into. So another neat little feature here that has to do with safety is you can enable contact information. So say something happens and you're just passed out and you're in a public place, nobody knows who to get in touch uh, to help you out. You can actually put your information, such as your phone number, email address, on the lock screen or maybe someone else's information, someone that uh, emergency responders can call on your lock screen. Next up, we'll jump into our display settings. I personally would suggest that you go ahead and turn on your adaptive brightness. What adaptive brightness is going to do is it's going to automatically adjust your brightness based on your lighting condition. So if you go outside, it's going to bump up the brightness. If you come back inside, it'll lower the brightness. And this being able to do it on its own can actually save battery life as well. There's a blue light filter here, which takes out the blue light and gives you more of a yellow hue. Uh, the blue light puts a lot of stress and strain on your eyes and makes it a little more difficult to fall asleep. So having this blue light filter turned on at night can help you to get to sleep a little faster. And there's even a night mode here, which turns on a darker setting. The dark mode here gives you a dark theme. I actually kind of like that and I'll probably just stick with this night mode theme. Uh, you can also turn it on as scheduled. So if you only want it to turn on at night, you can set the time to turn it on at night. I'll just keep it turned on always because I kind of like how it looks. There will also be an option here to bump up the resolution to QHD plus. That option isn't here on the Note 10 because this is a 1080p display. It doesn't go to QHD plus. So here that option is not available. While we're here, we might as well go ahead and set up the navigation bar. So you can actually change the way that your navigation buttons are laid out. If you're used to like a Google Pixel, then you would want to reverse the layout. I'm used to Samsung's layout, so I'll stick with that. And then you can even try the full screen gestures. I've tried them in the past on the Galaxy S10 Plus. I prefer just the regular navigation buttons, but that's how you would turn the full screen gestures on. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that the accidental touch protection is turned on. If this is turned off and your phone's in your pocket, it could make the screen turn on, which could in turn kill some of that battery life. So you wanna make sure that this accidental touch protection is turned on. You do have some screen modes here. It comes neutral, but if you prefer the punchy colors of a Samsung OLED, you can turn on vivid. And then they even give you options here to change the white balance and you can even change the color settings. Of course, the main feature of the Note 10 and Note 10 Plus is the S Pen. I really love this blue color. It's like a midnight blue. It just looks awesome. Of course, this does have Bluetooth and a battery built in. We still have the clicky button up top, which is very satisfying. And then we've got a button here that we can use 
for different commands. So Air Actions is new. It says you can open apps, take pictures, control music, and more without touching your screen. To use Air Action, just press the pin button or hold it down, make a gesture, then release the button. So pressing and holding the button by default is going to open up your camera. You can actually take a photo using your S Pen by pressing the button. That's going to take a photo. If you press it and flip, that's gonna rotate your camera. So now we've got the front facing camera. This makes taking selfies super easy because you can just press your remote button. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so what we'll do here, we'll go into our S Pen and I like the fact that it has the battery indicator. So it's showing me how much battery is left in my S Pen. If we go into our settings, air actions here can be changed. So you can open the gallery, you can open Samsung Notes, AR Doodle, AR Emoji Clock. You can even uh, turn on the Google Chrome. I prefer the camera. Uh, so we'll go in here and, and set what we want to set when we hold it down. I'm gonna change it to the gallery. If we hold it down, it's going to launch the gallery. So yeah, I prefer just launching the camera. You can go through here and change what happens whenever you do different actions. A single press takes a picture or records. A double press switches cameras. Uh, gesturing up or down switches the camera. Left or right changes the mode. Clockwise circle zooms in or out. So yeah, we will long press to open up the camera. We'll flip it open here. We've got several different options in our camera. So we can kind of scroll through these by pressing and flicking. We should be able to press and rotate to zoom in and out. This is pretty cool. There is a pin proximity alert. So if you turn this on, say you set down your pin, you forget it, you walk away, you're gonna get a notification on your phone saying, hey, you forgot your S pin, go back and get it, don't leave that behind. So I kind of like the fact that that is an option there. So while we're talking about the camera, we'll go ahead and set it up as well. A uh, simple double press of the Bixby power button there will launch the camera. If you double press it again, that's going to flip the camera. And then if you press the volume down button, that's going to snap a picture. Of course, we can take a picture with our uh, button on our S Pen, which is a great feature. We have several options down at the bottom here. You can go into your video. We now have live focus for video, which is awesome because now you can get a bokeh effect in the background of your videos as well as your photos. So before all we had was our live focus mode for photos. Now you have the live focus mode for videos as well. You do have a pro uh, feature here so that you can change your ISO and white balance and your aperture to get uh, the exact photo that you wanna get. There's a panorama mode, and then we also have a night mode. This is going to help you to get awesome pictures in low light situations. If we scroll all the way to the right, you do have slow motion. So you can take really good slow motion and also super slow-mo. Okay, so we can also jump into our settings. There's a few things here that we probably want to adjust. Scene Optimizer is turned on by default. This uses AI to adjust the colors and lighting of the photos that you take. I would suggest turning this off. Sometimes you get things like um, artificial smoothing that doesn't look the best. It kind of makes it look like you have a beauty mode turned on. Uh, so I would just turn that off from the get-go. HDR, you will want to go ahead and have that turned on. Uh, you can set that to always so that you always have your HDR turned on. That's probably what I would do. And then you're also going to want to make sure that you change the resolution. So if you go into the resolution of your rear video, you can turn this up to UHD. So you've got a 4K camera here. There's no reason why you shouldn't be recording everything in 4K. You've even got a UHD at 60 frames per second, which is an awesome feature. This does come with a 256 gigabyte uh, storage, so there's no reason that you shouldn't be shooting in 4K. You can also set the front video size here, and you also have a UHD setting for the front-facing camera. So a few other things here, you do have grid lines that you can turn on so that you can get your shot lined up perfectly. There is a floating shutter button. So if we open up our camera here, this floating shutter button, you can put it exactly where your thumb would go to make shooting 
photos easier. I don't really see the need for it on the Note 10 because you do have the S Pen that you can use as a remote, which to me is the better option. So one last thing before we jump out of the camera here, uh, you do have three lenses on the back of the Note 10 and there's even a fourth lens on the Note 10 Plus that's more for sensing depth for things like um, AR functions. But you've got your wide angle lens and you have a two by zoom lens that's going to, this is an optical zoom. So instead of it being a digital zoom, you're gonna get a full two by zoom and then you have your standard lens there as well. If we jump into our advanced options, so settings, advanced options, we do have some things that we can set up here. If we go to the side key option, uh, you can turn off the Bixby function. So the press and hold normally launches Bixby, but if you choose power off menu, now when you press and hold, you're gonna get the power menu. So if you're not a fan of Bixby, that's an easy way to remove Bixby. We do have this open app, so you can double tap to open any app, so that's pretty cool. So this is kind of uh, a way that we can easily remap the big speed button. So I actually really enjoy that feature. So I'll probably just leave that as double tap to open the camera. But I like the fact that that is remappable. Quickly, if we do jump back into our settings and our advanced features, we've got plenty of other neat things here. You can reduce animation times here without having to go into your developer options. So that's like going from screen to screen those are your screen animations. You can reduce those so that it would appear that you're moving through the windows faster. You've got a video enhancer, which enhances the image quality of your videos when you're in certain applications like YouTube or Netflix. That option is there. You've got all kinds of motions and gestures that you can set up. There is also in the motions and gestures, there is one handed mode. This is a pretty large display, even more so on the Note 10 Plus. If you turn that on, we we'll just swipe from the corner to give you a much smaller screen. That way you can access all of your screen and you can change which side that shows on. All right guys, that about wraps it up for the first 10 things that you want to do on your Galaxy Note 10 to get the best possible experience. Same goes for the Note 10 Plus and definitely want to grab one of those cases Goodness gracious, I can't believe how greasy that is. Anyways, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks, guys, for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.